Just before we went for a break, we were discussing the differences that we witnessed within the Jubilee Party. And my panel in unison sort of have this agreement that maybe this is not some of the things that we should be discussing today. You know, the differences that these leaders are witnessing today. Or Mudavadi waking up in the morning and deciding to say that, okay, yes, Deputy President William Ruto is undermining, uh, you know, President Uhuru Kenyatta. This is what we see on the newspaper. Stop derailing Uhuru and Raila, members of parliament, told. I mean, all this is all about individuals. Where is the common mourner in she placed on this, uh, Sir Andrew? Well, if, if issues were being addressed, we would find out where the job creation is, okay. where, where it is not. You know, if the, if the head of state goes off to, to revive a parastatal, yeah. essentially. River text. River text. And we're actually not even focused on the goodness of it. We are the focused goodness on or the, the problems. Yes. Or the not problems. Not, we don't even discuss the negatives mm -hmm. of of, of the government reviving or a para, as a parastatal or a university. And nobody seems to care that we don't grow cotton the way we did in the 70s and 80s, so mm -hmm. what's going to feed the factory? When, I, when the AGOA, the African Growth Opportunity Act, comes to a close in 2025, the fact is that it will not be renewed in the United States, and mm -hmm. Kenya will not be able to export duty-free textiles. Mm -hmm. So we are, again, reviving a, a, an industry that, for whatever reason, was allowed to fail in the 80s, and then revived again. All right. But I, and so we, we spend so much time discussing who said what about whom. It's like a gossip club here. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, it's like, it's like a, a Sunday social. We have genuine issues, in fact, with security. We, we had 10 to, to 13 cops killed. I mentioned it last mm -hmm, Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, a safari com mass was blown up in Garissa, and a police camp was attacked yes. on Saturday. Now, the, the cops killed three Al Shabaab attackers, but the fact that these camps continue to be attacked by, by, by a, a so called ragtag group of, of, uh, of, of guerrillas on their back leg, almost defeated, you know, you don't attack police posts and get away with arms and ammunition while the police are. are hunkering down in their bunkers, defending themselves, as they should. We have, there are, sh on social media, whether it's on Twitter, Facebook, there is a Nairobi security brief going around, which I, I it was confirmed to me by a mall owner that he received a, a security brief over the last couple of weeks mm -hmm. that, that actually raised the issue of, of possible terror attacks at GPO, at the General Post Office and elsewhere. Uh, by Al-Shabaab, mm -hmm. and it is now a little bit after six months following the, the, the successful attack at Ducid 2, mm -hmm. uh, 14 Riverside Drive. So there are genuine uh, threats to be faced, and, and yet we're talking about who's doing what to whom, in which political party. There are people who are saying, stop undermining the handshake, but, that w but if you're a politician who wants to be president, aren't, isn't, who are you uh, criticizing? When you criticize, aren't you undermining them? If there's some, if there's a reason to criticize what's going on, and there certainly is, then you, then you're, you have a, the talk about we should have, have allegiance to a handshake that brought peace, a temporary peace, uh, is, is not, this is not dealing with real issues. Yeah. The real issues having to be with reviving river tax without reviving cotton production. Sadly. Cotton production, which the last big year was 1986. Mm. Therefore, by the time, if anyone is able to start producing cotton on a mat to feed Rivitex or any, or any of the other industries, mm. mm -hmm. uh, there won't be the AGOA agreement. Who are you going to export to? Mm, yeah. the, so basically, we never seem to hear about issues. Mm -hmm. uh, by the same token, politicians or somebody is now drumming up the, the, the drums of, of war are being beaten to go over this maritime dispute mm -hmm. with Kenya and Somalia, and Somalia. which is in front before a court. And yes, the Arab parliament uh, warned uh, Kenya to back away, mm -hmm. but what is mm -hmm. the Arab the parliament? Influence, the, uh, well, no, the, the Arab, Arab parliament is full of countries right. that don't like each other anyway mm -hmm. in, within the, uh, the League of Arab States. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, these are not friends. So, okay. And that also then is used as a, to say, oh, people are interfering in the internal affairs, or the, they're getting involved in the Horn of Africa, but without saying why and coming up with any sort of reason. But we're beating the, the drum for patriotism. And I think you mentioned, Linda, about my gingo. Yes. That seems to come up all the time whenever we have these political problems and the, and the, the members of parliament from that, from Luan mm Nyanza. -hmm. This is traditional. Magingo is a tiny island in Lake Victoria, which is 100% surrounded by the East African community. The East African community is supposed to be developing into an integrated uh, trade block, maybe polit political block someday. And last week, the announcement was that, that a yet another failed state, the D 
DRC, DRC wants yeah. to join the East African community and everyone yes. is celebrating mm -hmm. a place that hasn't had peace since it was made independent in 1960 60s. and mm -hmm. is now uh, going to be exporting refugees mm -hmm. from the East where things are collapsing again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the, uh, there, the, these are important issues mm -hmm. and, and the fact that yes, there are fish around Magingo, Notionally, that should be handled within the context of the East African community. community yeah. And yet every few months, we hear about sending police, the Ugandans. I, we don't live in Uganda, mm -hmm. so we don't have their media. For all I know, they beat drums of war about Magingo as well. All but right. all of this is, these are, this is diversion, it's dissembling. And essentially, it takes our, our vision away from the important things mm -hmm. that should be going on Well, it on may here. be diversion. Uh, these are issues that we also need to address. Thank you so much for introducing that uh, topic. On my behalf, on matters maritime border dispute, I would have wanted us to touch on the SGR story that is highlighted on the front page of the Daily Nation, but then again, equally a big story that clearly indicates of how we have misplaced policies, uh, policies sorry, and how maybe the necessary stakeholders have not been very keen in sort of setting up some of these policies and some of these projects that we're talking about because this story on the front page of the Daily Nation on SGR tells us of how much we're supposed to pay and how much more Kenyans will pay about 21 million daily on a project that is not even ongoing on the SGR, the Naivasha Kesumu one that we are expected or we were expected uh, to have but then again we did not get the, the loan from China so it's pretty much unfortunate. The Lake, T I mean the, Lake, the Takana Wind project, that, we, that we're, paying, we're paying we're paying rates, now yes. and, and it's based on the fact that Ketraka was not able, able to run to, a, yeah. to hook them up to the national grid mm -hmm. and yet the contract which is, these are sweetheart contracts and it, you can't blame the 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 company that that notionally in good faith puts up a the, this huge wind farm mm -hmm. which is sustainable it's renewable and all that and so they're not able to deliver electricity to our homestead to our homes. Yes, and, yet and yet we are paying, paying because paying. they because the contract is written mm -hmm. we deliver our goods, our services, but if, and if you can't sell mm -hmm. it because something happens, and what happens inevitably now mm -hmm. is Ken Jen is the, does its job at its end. Mm -hmm. Then Katraco drops the ball in between. Mm -hmm. Kenya Power then gives us the, the higher bills, mm -hmm. and then Kenya Power says, oh, it's not our fault, it's Katraco. None of this would happen, for example, mm -hmm. if there were a, a public utility, a nationalized public utility, in which there was KPLC, Katraco, and Kenjen, mm -hmm. a consolidated company that we could actually find out who's doing what to whom, mm -hmm. and whose only objective would be to provide affordable electricity to all consumers in Kenya. In Kenya. Mm -hmm. We now have a situation where nobody's accountable for delivering anything. And everyone talks about, I did my job, mm -hmm. I did my job. Right. This, this thing with the SGR is, uh, the loan didn't come through, but we have to pay. We have, we have compensation to pay for landowners. Yeah. And now we're paying, we, we had all the people put into their contracts mm -hmm. a non-performance penalty. Sadly. Which, well, that's, that's their business. Mm -hmm. then you, but it leads you to, to wonder, are all, is all of this by design? <laughs> is all of this by right. design? You know you're not going to make, be able to meet the... Uh, the, the performance date. But then in a clear indication, you still proceed. But everyone gets paid. Yeah. Everyone gets paid even though there's no SGR running. Mm -hmm. It is pretty much to assume that it's not by design. People get paid anyway, to, it's, it's, to not deliver electricity to my house. I know. But I pay. Sadly enough. How do you go into a contract that says you go to, by the way, I don't know why they call it Electrocana. Okay, Electrocana mm -hmm. is on the other side, but this yeah. is in Marsabit. Mm -hmm. This okay. big project is in Mar <laughs> Marsabit County. Yeah. It seems mm -hmm. like we don't even understand our yes, maps. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Why would you go into a contract of paying for capacity when you don't have the infrastructure in place? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Why? And no, and in no the interest. first place. Mm. So you need to go back to this thing and find out why did we go into this in the first place. Mm -hmm. you, will find, you will find out. Amul yeah. power. And you, you will find out. Some guys, basically well connected, have been there. They have taken the, the bit, they have gone away. Mm -hmm. Or they are part of that process forever. They have been, you know, basically accommodated into the place and now we are paying for a production that does not exist. Exist at all, yeah. So, uh, so probably so, might never even. Yeah, but how did it go? Why did it not see the light of the day of in the Parliament? Day. Well, we're doing this again in Lamu in with the Parliament. coal project. Yeah, just a second. Uh, why didn't we do this in, have this thing in Parliament? Mm. Why was this matter not brought to Parliament at the appropriate time? Oh, yes. And say, this is the kind of understanding we're going into. It's going to cost us 
billions if not trillions of shillings over a period of time and That's we, we and, and parliament would have then debated that debated and said no yeah. you, you see what i mean it's never done that you know nothing about the oil contract with talo who knows that nobody a banana country that essentially has had a disintegration of a state and society for all these years and does not have the, 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 is not able even to take care of its own internal <laughs> security called Somalia, yeah. has got a PSA, production sharing agreement, mm -hmm. which is an open contract, which is being seen by everybody. And mm -hmm. they're, they're flagging it and saying this is the contract. the contract. So everybody has an opportunity to put the to input put their, into yeah. it. Uh, and then they say this is version 21, PSA version 21, well known. You right now, if you Google right now, you'll see exactly what, what PSA you know, is here. Yeah. They, they, they put a capping on the production, on, on what you call the cost. The cost, yeah. Because what the oil companies do is that they will give the countries, third world countries, they give you, they say, we share this 50-50, or we share this uh, uh, so much, so much, you know, 30, 20, whatever it is. Uh, but then this is after cost. Then they end up having 95% of that being cost. Yeah. Because they are the ones who are in control of the cost. Right. Mm. So you end up sharing 5% or getting less than 5%. Mm. That's exactly what's happened to Angola. Mm -hmm. Angola is giving all that oil uh, and, and the people of Angola are poor, mm. very poor. Right. But you see, we could have had this thing uh, with the education we have, with the enlightenment, uh, with the understanding Kenyans know everything, including mm. what happens in the rest of the world. Mm. Yeah. We would have said, okay, this is the kind of contract we're going into with Talo. We want public participation in that. Yes. Whenever there's a commitment of national resources mm -hmm. into a project, mm -hmm. there must be a public participation because they are, at the end of the day, going to pay for that. Mm -hmm. The masses are going to pay for that. They are going to pay for that. So we never right heard that. We never heard that. Only much later will you find out that the individuals who have plugged themselves into the contracts, how many contracts were uh, with, with uh, commercial entities or other corporations or is there with SGR right now, with the okay. Chinese? Very. Yeah. And, and yeah, we know. And we don't know about yeah. it. We don't know. We have no we idea. Well, about except it. that the pretty much probably very many. So, so the Angolans, no Angolans had a big, very nice contract, but yeah. eventually, but then when you look at Angola, look, the richest man is there, as as the head of as state the himself. Head of state, yes. the, the daughter is the richest, what do you call woman in the whole of the continent, yeah. mm -hmm. and, and this is a state country. And, and yes, and we celebrate we the daughter as being a, an entrepreneur. You know, the thing that we we miss is a place like Botswana when mm -hmm. they actually found diamonds. Uh, it was a dirt poor country, but it had a very, had a very sizable number of, of, because of their skills shortage, mm -hmm. talent shortage, if you will, it was an unrealized talent. A lot of the contracts and all, a lot of the civil servants happened to be on contract from yeah. the UK and elsewhere. And they negotiated the kind of agreement with mm -hmm. Botswana, with the, the, the beers, the, oh, the, 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 the huge, beers, the yeah. huge companies the, that, that required Botswana to process, to add value yeah, to right. diamonds, diamond cutting, right. for real. And so Botswana and, the, and you know, the, the, the Swana politicians didn't have their hands out looking for money in the beers, which does business globally. They, they, the beers was forced to, to concede that, no, we're not going to be able to do our own thing mm -hmm. with Botswana. Yeah. And so Botswana became, has become very wealthy and prosperous in many, in many respects, low population. But that's a, an example of good governance and having experts, mm -hmm. genuine experts in a country where having expertise that didn't matter what you looked like uh, externally yeah. and and it worked out very well it's a very similar pr process or in Sierra Leone in Sierra did not Leone, work yes, out mm -hmm. in the early 80s they had a diamond cutting uh, facility in Freetown I, I remember seeing it in 1982 mm -hmm. it was empty because all the diamonds were going across the border anyway even before the war <laughs> yeah. because they had of their corrupt civil the service 